Over the years, I have freeze dried just about everything and anything. The only thing I haven't been able to freeze dry successfully is mayonnaise. It's just too much oil. But foods high in oil, high in sugars, high in salts are difficult to freeze dry. Well, I've learned a lot over the many years and I'm turning my attention now to raw meat. And the question is, should you freeze dry raw meats? Is there a benefit to doing that? If you're doing component cooking, it'd be nice to have some meats that you can put to, you know, you can, you can freeze dry some raw meats, rehydrate them, and then make a food or a dish using raw meat, raw in, ingredients. So you have component cooking on one side, and the other side is having ready to eat meals or ready to eat foods. Uh, I have freeze dried a lot of cooked meats and that is really successful, not a problem with cooked meats. But the big raw meat that I'm concerned about and this video is focused on is raw chicken. First of all, as soon as you say raw chicken, that comes, that brings to mind all sorts of problems with, you know, the health of raw chicken with, you know, salmonella and the other uh, viruses and bacteria that can come along with chicken. Pink, pink, pink chicken. Roll, roll, roll. No, no, no. Well, when it comes to chicken, fat is flavor. Right here, I have five thigh. I, I, I debone five thighs. So this is a meat from the five thighs. And I went through it very painstakingly to get rid of any additional fat because the biggest problem with freeze drying raw meats is taking care of the fat. Fat is difficult to freeze dry because in the storage bag, if the fat is not fully rendered or if it has any moisture in it, if it's not completely dry, the fat can actually rehydrate some of the meat and can go rancid and cause all kinds of problems and spoil your food. Now, I also have here some chicken breast. Now, chicken breast, I've had really good success with raw chicken breast because raw chicken breast is almost, by its definition, is fairly lean. There, you'll find a little bit of fat around the chicken breast and that's easy to remove. And so chicken breast, I've always had good luck with that, but it's the, the dark meat, like the thigh meat, the drumsticks, that are difficult because there's fat all over and you can spend hours and I pretty much did trying to remove a lot of the fat from the meat and you may not catch it all. And so when it comes to thigh meat, you're running a risk of freeze drying it because of the content of the fat. Thigh meat is by far the tastiest uh, probably of all the chicken meat, but also has the most problems. So. We're going to freeze dry this food. I have one tray of thigh meat and I have three trays of chicken breast. So I'm going to go ahead and freeze dry this. And while this is freeze drying, I'm also doing another test. I'm also running a test to see if there's any cross contamination within the freeze dryer. And so I, I ran some tests on raw eggs and on this raw chicken to see if during the freeze drying process, if any micro, micro particulates of food will leave the trays and float around inside the freeze dryer and embed itself into the walls around the tray or somewhere else. And then when you do your next load and you put in say mashed potatoes or something like that and you do it the next cycle without cleaning it, can any of those micro particulates of raw chicken get onto other foods? Now, salmonella and other bacteria that could be found in raw chicken and in raw eggs in the freeze drying process pretty much go through a cryogenic stage. The, the salmonella and listeria can still be active, but while it's freeze dried, it's basically hibernating. 
And so years from now, when I when you rehydrate those mashed potatoes, and there may have been some micro particulates of raw chicken on them, could that pose a risk? So we're running the test on that to see if cross-contamination is something to be concerned about. So these are ready to go into the freezer and then onto the freeze dryer, and then we'll see how the outcome is. In order to do this, to test for any cross-contamination within the freeze dryer, step number one is we gotta clean the freeze dryer and remove any potential problems from past cycles. So we're gonna go ahead and take the freeze dryer apart. We're gonna take the shelf out. We're gonna scrub that all out. We're gonna scrub out the chamber and make this the cleanest freeze dryer known to mankind. And the cleaner of choice is gonna be our good old isopropyl alcohol, the 70% solution. If your freeze dryer is anywhere near, there might be a spark or a flame, you might wanna cut this with about 50% water, just so you don't have any gases that could ignite. Just be on the safe side. Now this is interesting, I'm not sure if you can see this, but my uh, paper towel has a slight yellow tinge to it, and that's primary oxidation from the food. And sometimes the same oxidation will also give a yellow tint to your oil, but that doesn't decrease the effectiveness of your oil. The reason I like isopropyl alcohol is because one, it's approved by the FDA to be used around uh, food and food preparation surfaces. It's pH neutral and it does not require to be rinsed like many of the sanitizers are required. First batch we're gonna do is going to be eggs. And I have a swab here. I have it labeled baseline eggs. And so we're gonna go ahead and break this seal here and activate the swab. And we're gonna go ahead and swab the inside of the chamber. And we're gonna swab the shelf. and get a good baseline of everything that's sterile to see if there's gonna be any cross-contamination when we freeze dry the eggs. So this is gonna be put back inside and taken for testing. I just finished a batch of eggs and these were raw eggs and so we're gonna go ahead and swab the chamber and see what happens. And we'll send this off to the lab and we'll see if there's any egg particulates in the chamber that eventually could go bad and perhaps uh, cause a problem. The next cr cross-contamination event we're going to do is with, with raw chicken. So the first one was with uh, raw eggs. We're now gonna do raw chicken and see if there's any cross-contamination. So we're gonna go ahead and break the seal on this and squeeze the medium down into the tube. And that goes back in and this will be sent to the lab. This is an animation of how cross-contamination happens in the Harvest Right freeze dryer. Two loads were run through the freeze dryer. The first one was raw chicken, the second one was raw eggs. Prior to the batch, the shelf assembly and chamber was sterilized with alcohol. During sublimation, moisture and microparticulates would leave the food and would attach itself to the freeze dryer wall. The microparticulates carrying any bacteria would embed itself in the ice around the chamber. At the end of the cycle, the ice would melt off 
but would leave much of the bacteria behind on the chamber wall. The chamber wall was then swabbed and cultures grown to see what kind of organisms remained behind. The samples were taken to a lab for identification, and these are the results. Both the raw chicken and the raw eggs were labeled TNTC, which stands for too numerous to count. There are so many organisms on the chamber wall, it is not possible to count the amount because they're just too numerous. The next test was to see how much of this bacterial medium could leave the chamber wall and come back to the trays. In order to do this, sterilized trays were filled with water, pre-frozen and placed in the freeze dryer. During the freeze dryer cycle, as the water sublimated, and ice formed on the chamber wall, a certain amount of material from the chamber wall left the chamber wall and intermixed with the trays of ice water in the freeze dryer. At the end of the cycle, the trays were swabbed and cultures were collected. These are the results. 30 colonies of E. coli and this is a non-pathogen E. coli, not all E. coli is bad. 260 colonies of aerobic bacteria, primarily bacteria related to food spoilage, were collected. One colony of harmful E. coli were found. These samples were from colony forming units per one millimeter. What can be done to reduce the bacterial growth in your freeze dryer? Well, there's a few things you can do. For one, when not using your freeze dryer, leave the door open. It's important that air has an opportunity to dry out your freeze dryer. Bacteria will want to have a nice, warm, moist area to grow. So if you leave the door open, that will help air out your freeze dryer. One of the things I use to help defrost my freeze dryer is a simple fan that I can just slide in to the freeze dryer opening. And I can turn this on, and this will also circulate air. And on this side of the freeze dryer, and exits on this side of the freeze dryer. And this will keep the temperatures nice and cool, and this will actually dry out the freeze dryer and, pre and prevent bacterial growth. Bacteria wants a nice, warm, moist area to grow in. That's what they thrive on. And so if you limit the use of your heater defrost, not only will you save money, but you'll also keep your freeze dryer at a cooler temperature to help lessen the growth of bacteria. Aside from using a fan to keep your chamber nice and dry and cool, you can also sterilize your chamber. Now, I would not sterilize your chamber after every use. I just think that's not practical. And the more you take out the shelf, the more stress you're gonna be putting on your wire harness. The more that wire harness moves back and forth, there's always a possibility of having some open or shorted wires in that harness. So you might want to just think about sterilizing your freeze dryer after every four or five loads. Now, if you're going to sterilize your freeze dryer, about the only practical thing that I would recommend and also the FDA recommends is isopropyl alcohol at a 70% solution. This is pH neutral, so it won't harm the stainless steel drum. And it also, it does not require rinsing. So you can use this as a liquid or a spray now, if you're gonna be using isopropyl alcohol, I would suggest you don't have any uh, spark or heat sources anywhere nearby because it is possible, but not probable, that the fumes could ignite. And isopropyl alcohol is recommended by the FDA to be used around food surface preparation areas, and it kills bacteria on contact. You may have not known, but you've seen the bacteria that causes spoilage. If you can remember these old filter assemblies that Harvest Wright used to have, and if you ever notice some of this stuff that's kind of floating around, well, what this is, this is oil that also has food particulates in it. And the bacteria 
is E actually eating these little particulates of food and they're actually growing. And with the water in here, it provides the moisture and your house provides the heat. So they got the heat, they got the moisture, they got the food. So you'll see these little colonies in here that are just growing. And this is actually the bacteria that comes off of food. And it's not necessarily bad bacteria. Most bacteria that causes food spoilage is harmless. And I'm not going to name them, but they're on the bottom of the screen and you can try to pronounce them yourself. But in many cases, the bacteria that causes spoilage is not harmful. And actually the FDA has a statement concerning this type of bacteria. This is a page from the USDA's website and it's called, have a question. And right down here, they answer the question of what are the signs of food spoilage? And the answer reads as foods that deteriorate and develop unpleasant odor and taste and texture are spoiled. Spoilage bacteria can cause fruits and vegetables to get mushy or slimy or meat to develop a bad odor. Most people would not choose to eat spoiled food. However, if they did, they probably would not get sick. So the whole point behind this is that spoilage bacteria, as unpleasant as it may be, will not really harm you. There's really nothing you can do to keep the micro particulates of food leaving the tray here actually become an airborne with sublimation and sticking on the walls of the freeze dryer. The issue is, is the next time you freeze dry, if I do raw chicken today and all those micro particulates will end up on the sides or on the surfaces of your freeze dryer, the next time you do a load, those micro particulates can migrate back into your trays. And if you have a load of raw chicken or eggs that might have salmonella or listeria or something else, there's always that possibility of having cross-contamination coming back into your trays. And since you really can't kill bacteria in the freeze dryer, it just goes dormant until years from now when you want to rehydrate your food, you're also going to be bring the bacteria back to life and it could very well become active again. The takeaways from this is clean your freeze dryer accordingly. Do it when you think it's necessary. I definitely would clean your freeze dryer after loads of raw chicken, raw eggs, other raw meats are not much of an issue. They're pretty safe and you might want to clean it prior to doing loads of dairy products milk, cheeses, sour cream, yogurts would also be a safe time to sterilize your freeze dryer. Now after doing a load of garlic or a load of onions, it's not necessary to sterilize your freeze dryer, but you might want to clean your freeze dryer because those items have to have, you know, they can smell pretty strong and you don't want to have those micro particulates because that's what you're smelling. When you smell that onions, when you smell garlic or any other smell that goes into your nostrils, you're actually inhaling micro particulates. And so that's something to also think about is after strong smelling uh, foods, you might want to sterilize and clean your freeze dryer, not, for, not so much for cross-contamination, but so you don't have that smell carrying over to your next batch of food. I hope this was helpful. Keep your freeze dryer clean, keep it dry, keep it cool, and you can cut down on any bacterial growth that may end up in your food. Until we meet again, I'd like to thank you for your time. I'd like to thank you for your support and your comments. Please subscribe and remember to go forth and freeze dry the world.